about answering the call, and we started last week on that, and y'all can probably turn the middle stands out there because I can tell people to share with you. Hold on. See, y'all need to. So anyway, uh, and so here's what I want y'all to understand, and, and I'm speaking prophetically as your pastor, and I'm speaking from my heart because it frustrates me and it frustrates God when his people aren't living in their calling. It aggravates God. Because why? Because it, it grieves me as a pastor. And so there are two key verses in the Bible that I, that I live and breathe on. Well, there are a lot of them, but when I'm talking about people and their calling, the first one is, uh, is found in 2 Chronicles. Show us that. Find that Well, you know what? I'll just say it. Obey the prophets, and you'll prosper. All right? Yes, yes, that's right, yeah. Obey the prophets, and you'll prosper. And here's the deal. When you've been called to a certain ministry, a certain area, a certain calling, what you go through will be a part of what God called you to do. I'll say it again. When you've been called to a certain ministry, to a certain calling, to a certain area, what you go through will be a part of your calling. I just got the phone with a good friend of mine yesterday who I told him what he and his family what to do six months ago, four months ago. No, six months ago. And they said, well, we don't think that's God's will. I get a phone call yesterday and he's depressed. He almost had a suicidal. His wife and he are fighting. And I said, what did I tell you to do six months ago? Well, I haven't done it. Obey the prophets and you'll prosper. Are we always right? No, my wife and I are always right. But when you come to us or when we say something to you all as not a joke, because I know I joke a lot, both, and it freaks people out when I get serious, but I'm speaking from the heart of God. And I want everyone here to prosper, to be in what God's called you to do. And when we say it, it may scare you. That means that you need to step up your faith level. And so you, you've got to move into and walk into the calling. Now, with that in mind, we learned last week that everyone has a calling to share the gift. We all do. This is a calling that, that you can't escape from. Now, there's different ways. There may be people who aren't comfortable with sharing the gospel with street ministry. There are people who aren't comfortable with doing things like that. That's, that's understandable. But you are called to share the gospel to somebody often. That is your calling as a Christian. You can't get out of it at all. Because Jesus said go. He didn't say how you go. He just said go. And that is in Power Life Church's mantra is that we want to provide as many avenues for the people of this community to grow and know Christ. That's why we're starting a Saturday night service. That's why we're believing God for other campuses. That's why we have life groups. That's why we have men's Bible study. Because we want to make sure, you know, I had a slogan that my wife and I came up with about four years ago. And we heard it from another pastor who didn't live here. And our whole goal here at Empire Life Church is to make it hard for you to go to hell. In Power Life Church, making it hard for beggars to go to hell. That's our whole goal. We want it to be a, a, a concerned effort for you to go to hell. Well, well, you know, Lord, they work hard to get to hell. They work real hard to get to hell. So, <laughs> with that in mind, that's why we do what we do. Because we don't want you in hell. We don't want you to be in hell. We don't want you to have hell on earth. Well, you should be the most prosperous people in the world because you're Christians. And I don't mean just money. I mean in your heart. Because you know why? Because there are people who have a lot. I, I was talking to somebody this morning. I know a guy makes $20,000 a month. And he's miserable. Miserable. Pat works at a, a real ritzy high rise. And there are people there who were millionaires. But he's up there ministering to people who, who, who are millionaires, who, who are hurting and broken. He knows his calling. So this morning, we're going to spend a, some time in helping you understand what it's going to take for you to understand the calling on your life. Because if you don't get that calling, you will be miserable. 
you may find other areas of prosperity because see we think that if we make a certain amount of money then, then, then you're in God's call. Mm -mm, no it's not. Because if you think about it, Matthew was a tax collector. He was real, real rich, but he wasn't in God's calling. Saul murdered people, and he wasn't in God's calling. Who was a fisherman? Peter. Oh, wow, child into that. That's scary. That's, that's a good thing, actually. Peter was a fisherman, and he, and he was very, very prosperous, but he wasn't in God's calling. You may make 50, 60, 70, 80, 150,000 dollars a year, whatever the case may be. But if you aren't in God's calling, you are completely out of bounds. You're lost. And you wonder why you go to, to your job and you make all this money and you come home and you go, oh, man, just money. Now, believe this or not, many of your callings can be transitioned, or many of your occupations right now can be a transition to your calling. I was an airline pilot for nine years. I flew airplanes for 20 years. That was a transition to my calling here. The airline brought me here. Southwest brought me here. And think about this, and, and my wife can attest to it, there was a time that we had $15,000 a month come into our house. And I'd go, hmm. when I made captain, when I made captain Southwest, it was my first few months, and I, and I mean, captain is like the thing at the airlines, right? So I'm sitting there, captain, I'm making a lot of money, you know, I have a stripes on, fly to this company, and just give me stuff, you know, chilling out. And I looked over the window, and I said, is this all this is? I wasn't in my calling. And God was trying to kick me out of my calling. Well, first he tried to push me out. He finally had to get a crowbar and uproot me out somehow, because why? He would keep... <laughs> He loved y'all. <laughs> Think about it. He loved you guys. Because if I had stayed at Southwest, it, hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you know, as and, and, and I'm, I'm just sharing my heart this morning. Many of you all are in an occupation right now that is not your calling. It may be a transitionary calling. But everyone has something to do ministry wise. Uh, and it, it may not be having a church. It may be having a church. It may be a missionary. It may be whatever the case may be. But you have a ministerial calling in your life. And I'll prove it to you this morning. All right, here we go. Matthew 28, 18 says this. This is Jesus talking. So Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Teach these new disciples, these new people who don't know anything about me, to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even in the age. The Message Bible says this, Jesus uttered, oh sorry, Jesus, uh, Jesus undeterred, went right ahead and gave this charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you, go out and train everyone to meet far and near in this way of life. Marking them by baptism, by the threefold name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. So, to paraphrase in ELC terms, hey you, Kevin, Carrie, Pat, Curtis, I'm Jesus right now. I have been given all authority from God. God told me that I got this on earth now. Since I died, rose, Kicked Satan's butt all over the place for three days, had him cry like a little girl. <laughs> he said, you know what, now I'm going to give you all authority on earth. You are the man on earth now. So, when you walk as a Christian, when you accept Christ or accept me as your Lord and Savior now, I'm going to give you that same authority. So watch this. Now, you go and let people know about me, Jesus. You let, him, you let them know. You know what, and then... When they get saved, baptize them. Then, when they get baptized, sit down with them and mentor them. Tutor them in the way they should live their lives now. I got a guy who's, let's see, I'll be 50 this year. He's probably almost 60. He's a pastor in this area. And he said, hey, uh, Pastor Jerry, um, I don't know how to live like you, so can you help me live like you? And I'm paraphrasing. 
There are people who you may think got it all going on, but they ain't. They trifling, they janky, it just gets they're horrible. And they're gonna look at you and go, wow, Pat, wow, Sandy, I see how you and your spouse live, you know, I mean, y'all live a great life. How can I do that? I mean, because right, because right now my life is horrible. And I see your life and I see, man, I mean, gosh, Sandy and Dave, you know, you're always happy, you got good kids, and you know, hey Q and John, y'all are always happy, you know. So how, how do I live that kind of life? They're gonna come to you, ask you that question, and you can't go like this. You <laughs> You'll go, well, first of all, I just, you know, I, I just love Jesus and he's important to me and I've made him my Lord and my Savior. That's, that's where it starts. It's that easy, y'all. It's that easy. It really is. I mean, you ain't got to, just like I said, you ain't got to start preaching to him and spitting on him and everything and laying hands right there at work. They'll cast you out. <laughs> I just had a vision of Zachary's Zachary sells cars. He, you know, and so he's giving a test drive on 215, and someone asked him about, you know, hey, you got two good-looking kids and good-looking wife. How you do it? Well, it's it's the power of God, and then, and then they swerve off the road. <laughs> no, but that's under guard. <laughs> like, oh, that, that must be Zachary preaching right there. <laughs> Woo, glory! The Empire Bible says this in Matthew 9:35. Sorry, Matt. Yes, it says. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news, the gospel, the kingdom of the kingdom, and curing all kinds of disease and every weakness and infirmity. When he saw the throngs, he was moved with, with pity and sympathy for them because they were bewildered, harassed, and distressed, and dejected, and, she and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Let me see with a show of hands, did you know someone like this? At work, at home, family, they're waiting on you. They're waiting on you. So then he said to the disciples, the harvest is indeed plentiful, but the laborers, or laborers in the Greek is also known as teachers, the teachers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to force out and thrust laborers into the harvest. Okay, so what's the harvest? The people who you work with, you know who are bewildered, who are lost, who don't know Christ, your classmates. I dare, and, and so we discuss this in youth, I dare my youth to go to school preaching the gospel, saying Jesus lives, Jesus lives. You may be by yourself, but you know what? If they kick you out, I get Derek, I get B, I get Joe, we'll whoop up in the heartbeat. Actually, that's, that's, we'll go up there real quick. So, no, no, the Constitution says this, because you know why? If two people of the same gender can hold hands, well, I can hold hands with Jesus. Amen. In full effect. Amen. I love Jesus. At Basic and at Foothill and at everywhere else. Y'all, there comes a point where you got to thumb your nose at what the world calls okay. Amen. And you got to say, you know what? I don't agree. Why? Because I'm a Christian. And if they kick you out, let them kick you out. That's why, you know, we can go on and on and on and on and on. But you know what? We can't do what makes us feel good all the time, church. We've got to do what's right, what's holy. And what's holy is standing up for our God-given constitutional rights. Now, don't, don't be going, be political here, but you know what? It's our right. It is your, you know what? That It is a law in the Charter of Nevada that you can't disallow someone to have a Bible study at school. But you would think that it is against the law. It's not against the law. It's a charter written into the, in, in the Nevada Constitution. That if you have a club at, at school and you call it a Christian club, it's, you can't stop it. But there are people who are afraid to do it. But I don't want to get persecuted. Let's see. Second, I think it's 2 Timothy 3 says that all those who plan on being Christians will face persecution. So get, just get used to it. Get used to it. Watch this. So when we hear the Lord saying, the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. That means, hey, there are people out there who don't know me. Now I send you out to talk to them. And then what would what, what, what would she say? Or what would they uh, then we say, just like Isaiah 6 say, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me, Lord. 
Send me, Lord. So our anchor verse is John 20, 21. It says, peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Say, Lord, Lord. I'm, going. I'm going. Here we go. Now watch this. Now, I'm going to give you two keys this morning. Here's two quick keys on how to get in gear to answer the call. How to get in gear to share the gospel in a very, very unobtrusive, unintimidating way to people who don't know it. Because you know why? They're going to come to you after this, after this Sunday morning. Well, watch, watch, watch. You will, you will be inundated. So tell me about your life, Lord. Man, or, or watch this. Here, here is code for my life's a mess. Man, you know, my kids are fighting, my, my husband's and, and those things, and my wife doesn't love me. That's code for my life's a mess. Preach to me, please. That's code. Or, well, you know what? God, yeah, I'm sick. I'm, I'm, I'm congested. I'm always sick and tired. And that's code for I need a healer. You know, man, I just can't seem to get up. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm down sometimes. That's code for I need a savior. And all you do is say, hey, you know, well, let's talk at lunch. You know what? I, I've sold Amway. I've sold Metaluca. I've sold. Now I'm selling no way. Okay? And so if I can sell it, I can sell anything. Why? Because I have a heart for Why? Because God says go. He says go. So when they say, you know what? I got this. You know what? Well, let's talk. So where are you spiritually? Well, I mean, I, I, well, you know, I believe in, in, in a higher power. Well, you know, since you asked. If, you know, I mean. I met Christ about five years ago, or about five months ago, or by, or like this Sunday. I just met him, and, and he's changed my life. And you know what? I'm not depressed anymore. I sleep all night long. I don't have to take any pills to be up or, or down. And I have a peace I've never had in my life. Y'all, they're going to jump all over you. How do you do it? Well, you know what? I just love Jesus. And he, and he changed my life. Hey, you know what? I've got this really strange pastor. <laughs> Why don't you come join us Easter? Or even the morning, just come, come. It, it's really, it, we're really late back, just come hang with us. Okay, okay. And you know, they may say no like 18 times. But that 19th time, you want to say a word to me. Hey, you know what? Uh, hey, 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 what time did church start? They'll beat you there. Uh, uh. Why? Because they want what you have. They want the real thing. So here we go. Here's, one, here's key number one to get into gear. Number one, we have to care. We have to care. We must see people the way God sees people through the eyes of a compassionate, merciful shepherd. Number one is we must care. If you don't care, then you won't be, you can't answer the call. You know why? Because you have self-fulfilling prejudices about who you think should be saved or not. I was over at 7-Eleven, where the second best coffee in the area is, and so I saw this couple get out of the car, and it was kind of a ratty car, and when I saw them in the past, because of how they dress and because of what they had on, I would go, but God has changed my heart. Because now I go, and I had to really fight myself because I didn't have any cards with me. <laughs> That's, don't carry cards. You carry the EOC cards. I had to fight myself to say, you know what? Uh, I, I can't right now. But and, and, and it grieved me when they drove off because I wasn't prepared. Do you know what I'm saying? So the people that you may not think should be in heaven, that was you a few years ago. <laughs> that was you a few years ago. That was you a few years ago. And see, I would love to get some of our Holy Ghost ladies and some of our Holy Ghost bouncers to wear some kit and some, some, some of those orange LC t-shirts and just go walking on Boulder Highway on a Saturday night about 8 o'clock at night. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. And say, hey, are you a pimp? I know a couple pimps in my church, past pimps, and you know, they love Jesus now. Are you a hooker, prostitute? Oh, well, well, come here, come here. I know a former pimp in my church, and he's a great man of God. And, you know, and here's some ladies who weren't, didn't do that, but you know what? They love God now. 
I threw that place out. They probably call it Pokemon Me. <laughs> <laughs> the pimp was told the police officer. Ain't that one of the great things? You have pimps call the police officers on Christians. That would be awesome. They're messing up our money, man. <laughs> Y'all, how bad do you how bad do you care for? Them? Because see again, that pimp, that prostitute. That drug dealer is no better than you are. It's just that they don't know what you know. They haven't submitted the way you submitted. Number two. Oh, oh here we go. Number two. You have to be willing to give up your life. To answer the call, you must be willing to give up your life. A completely. Completely. Meaning that you can't care about the rejection you're going to receive when you share the gospel. Well, what did what, what they say no? How many times did you say no before you got saved when someone shared Christ about, to you? About 8 million? So just get in line. Because you know what? If you're a dead man or a dead woman, then you don't have any deals anyway. You're just obeying your master. And he says, go. He said, there are people who are dying. You know, and I know that, you, you know, Bible speaks. Well, because it's normal. There's someone that you know right now at work or at home, not at home, in your family, who cusses like a sailor, who's living like heck. What happens if they have a car wreck and die tonight? And you know what you know because you were just too tired or didn't feel like it. you didn't share the gospel. We have that mantra to share the gospel. You've got to care and you've got to be willing to lose your life. First Corinthians 6, 19 says this, For do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore God, glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. The Mishnah Bible says this. Or didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place? The place of the Holy Spirit? Don't you see that you can't live however you please? Squandering what God paid such a high price for? The physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole work, so let people see God in and through you. Let people see God in and through you. The guy I was talking about who didn't know his calling, he's depressed, he's hurt, he's angry, he's frustrated. And, and you know what? When you know your calling, you may be in a transitionary occupation, but you are already doing your calling before you get to your calling. Did y'all catch that? When I was a pilot, I was sharing the gospel all the time. I went through a list that I had of people's names. I found it about two years ago. Of people's names that I had written down to pray over and to have a Bible study with, who I flew with. It was four pages long. When I was at Southwest Airlines, I had men's Bible studies of the men who I flew with. Huh, maybe some men's Bible studies here do I see. See, I was already doing what I was called to do before I was doing what I was called to do. See, I know deacons right now who are called to pastor. For example, there's a, there's a family that we helped start a church with back in Texas. And I told this young girl, how old is Jane? How old are you, girl? <laughs> when she was 11 and a half, I said, you know what? Hello, Pastor Stephanie. Hello, Pastor Caleb. Yeah, you can where you born. Hello. And I, because you know why? I saw a calling written all over their faces. And today, next month is their one year anniversary of having their own church in, in Walton, Texas. Amen. There are people here I know who are called to not be here every Sunday, but be out in the world sharing the gospel. Not at home, sleeping and chilling, but out in the world sharing the gospel. There's a big difference. Well, the young lady right now who's 
How old was Annie? About 80? Real young, good looking woman. She's 80. Every single, every single day, 24-7, 365, she's at a hospital or at hospice sharing the gospel with a dying elderly person. Every single day, all day long. She's 80 years old. She knows her calling. She knows what she's supposed to do. And nothing can deter her at all. Watch this story here. This is about Jesus. And someone who he loves, who he loves, challenged him on his calling. And you may not be able to see it initially, but watch this. This is what Jesus said, Mark. This is Matthew 16. It says, he said to them, but well, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, and I said to you, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So he's already told Christ who he was. Jesus answered, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall go against it. So now Christ gave him his call. See, once you know who Jesus is, he'll let you know who you are. I'll say it again. Once you know who Jesus is, he'll tell you who you are. And if you want to know, and if you're trying to figure out why you know who you are, because you don't know Jesus. You haven't encountered him. See, and one thing I will say about me, when people meet me as a pastor, they, they're, they, they go, wow, oh, he's weird. <laughs> I mean, well, because I know my call. I mean, you can't take down my calling. You just can't. I remember I was 12 years old. I was preaching up until 12 years old. Hmm. That's somebody else I know. Think about it, church. Do you know your calling? If not, get in his face. Let him figure out who he is. You know who you are. Watch this. That goes and says, um, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bother will be loose on earth, and it will be loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Now, skip down to verse 22. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, oh, you Lord this should not happen. Happen. But he, but he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. See, Peter was very, very close to Jesus. They were brothers. I mean, not, but they were, they were close as brothers. And if Jesus didn't know his calling, his brother could have taken him out of his calling, his destiny. So watch this. When you meet Jesus face to face, and you tell him who he is, and he tells you who you are, don't let nobody tell you who you ain't. I'm just jacking up things right now, I'm sorry. Don't let anyone tell you who you're not, why? Because they will steal it. And, they will, and they're not being mean, but they don't know you like Christ knows you. They'll try to take you out of your God-ordained calling. When you know who you know who you know. There are people trying to say, you know, Tony, don't marry Jerry. You know, you know, he's controlling, you know, da 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 But the girl, you can call her. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> she knew her call. When my mom saw, you know what? Because when, when, when my mom saw her, she goes, yep, that's her. When her mom saw me, she goes, you know what? You crazy, but I like you. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you crazy, but I like you. And that's all I needed, right there. My mom and her mom, hey, we're good. Everybody else can go fishing. <laughs> Church, when you know your calling, you know it all. When you know your calling, and see, many of us, ooh, Many of you all have been told you're calling by Jesus in dreams, in visions, and prophetically, and for whatever reason, you ain't in it. Because someone has said, God, that's not God. That's not God. You'll die over there. I got an offer this past week to go minister in Pakistan. If God says go, I'm going. You know why? Because I can die over here, or I can die over there in God's calling. 
I ain't gonna die either way, but still. When you know you're called, you're gonna go. But see, people are afraid for you. Don't be afraid for me. Glory. Amen. So church, think about this. Your best intentions may be keeping you from your God-given destiny. Your best intentions may be keeping you from your God-given destiny. Your parents may be keeping you from your God-given destiny. Your spouse may be keeping you. Now, nah, nah, okay, let's just bring it in. I didn't say divorce. I didn't say if you're you, like, at your parents' house, it's different, but I mean, my mother has never told me and when I was an adult, okay, don't do something, unless it was to God. And if you know it's God, 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 go. What you waiting on? There are people waiting on you who are dying and going to hell. Go. So with those cards I gave y'all, go. Share it. If they say no, okay. You said no many, many times. <laughs> You're doing it because you love the gift that you have now. And you want to share that gift with somebody else. <coughs> See, here's my goal and dream and vision. This, this, this is just me. This is just me. I'm, I'm talking future. I know that one day I will be prosperous outside of church with whatever I'm doing. My heart and desire is to take our deacons to Hawaii. That's my heart and desire. Okay, that's my heart and desire. So, I know that that's in me, and so when I do that, it'll go, okay, it's just confirmation. It's confirmation. I've been believing God for five years for a worship band. It's, it's here. It's here. And, I, and, I, and, and, and I've had multiple outside sources confirm that. It's here. So what I pray for, I get. Why? Well, because I know my calling. It, it's your very well, Lord, if it's your will. No, bull chicken. I mean, I know my calling. I know my calling. And my calling is to speak the word and share the gospel. Glory to his name. So church, this week, take those cards and answer the call. Answer the call. Don't be afraid. Because you know what? That could be you who, who was afraid back then. And now answer the call. Let's pray. Go on.